Okay, here's a solution to a little bit of sprite challenges here. The first one shouldn't be too bad. We go to the man object. Let's get keyboard up. And we just want to do the movement and the sprite changing. So speed is 4. Set the direction to 90 for up. And change the sprite index to sprite man up. I'm just going to do a little copy-paste here. It's going to be a similar one for keyboard down. Down is 270. And obviously, sprite man down. Let's give this one a go. See what happens. Not bad. All right, we got that part working. Okay, so that was a bit of the easy one there, just doing the basic sprite changing. Now the next one, we'd said in the challenge that this one's a little tricky. Chest object. So we said put a chest object in the room. So let's get this object in there. And the idea with the chest is, is you touch it, it opens. You touch it, it closes. But what we don't want is we don't want the person sitting there right on top of the chest. And then it's going open, close, open, close, open, close. So we had mentioned use an alarm so the chest can only be open, closed every three seconds. So if we do happen to just sit on top of the chest, it'll only open and close every three seconds. So a little bit of a delay. Okay, for this one, I'm going to do it what I call the long way, just so you maybe learn a little bit, do it nice and clean. Gonna go to the chest object. The chest object has to remember two things. It has to remember whether it's open or not. I'm gonna call this M open. And I'm gonna say it's zero at the start. And then another one I have to remember here is I'm gonna have a variable called active. Okay, which means if I'm touched, will I change? from open to closed, or will I change from closed to open? This is going to be the one I'm going to use in the alarm. And so once the player touches the chest, I'm going to turn active off. I'm going to switch it to zero. And when it's set to zero, the player can have no effect on it when they hit it. And of course, I'll have an alarm, and the alarm will snap active back to one a couple seconds later. Okay, and then the chest can respond again to being hit by the player. Okay, so M open and active. Let's do the first part here. I'm gonna do chest, collides with man. Now notice I didn't do man collides with chest. I could have, but uh, for this one, most of the code is gonna be in the chest. So I just decided to do chest collides with man. Okay, but remember, you can always do it either way. Okay, here's the first check I'm going to do. I'm going to say if, if m open is 0, which means I'm not open, I'm going to switch m open to 1, and I'm going to change my sprite index equal to sprite chest open. Here's a good use of our else statement. Otherwise, I must have been already open. So M open is going to switch to zero. And sprite index is going to go to chest close. Now, the problem with this is I haven't hooked up the alarm yet. So if the player goes on top, you know, it's zero, it's going to switch it to open. If it's not open, it's going to switch it to closed. Let's just see how this behaves, if we can even see anything happening here. It should be a bit random when I touch it. So you can see that stuttering moment of movement it's doing there in the background, right? So it's just doing it really, really, really fast. So let's hook up the alarm and see this alarm working. So when the man touches the chest, let's say when they open the chest, this is where I'll turn on my alarm. I'm going to turn the active 
of the box. I'm going to say active is zero, no longer active. And I'll set an alarm for three seconds away. This alarm is going to turn that back. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So remember, I turned active off. Three seconds later, this alarm is going to go off. I'll turn active back to one. Now, if I run it now, well, I will run it now. We'll see what happens. No difference. Now, those of you that are paying attention there are probably asking some question about the active variable. I switched it to zero, but I never actually use it in any of my if statements. So here I go. This is a little bit from last day. I'm going to say if active is one and I'm closed, then I can open and do that. Here I'll change it to else. If active is one, I'll just add that in even though I don't have to, but just so the logic sort of looks similar in both lines here. If active is one and I'm open as one, then I can close. Now technically, I should also put the active as zero and the alarm 90 is zero in there too. That way there's a three second delay on open, three second delay on close. But if you notice the logic here, only when active is one is it going to allow change into the box sprite. As soon as you do open it or close it, the variable goes to zero and it's got to wait three seconds before it gets turned back to one again. So this should solve our problem here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Come on, one, two, three. So it's close. But anyways, you can see it actually is working. So if you were to go open the box, you know, touching it doesn't close it. If I want to close it, I go back after. Now, three seconds is a bit of a long delay, but it just gives you that idea that you can control the sprites and not always, you know, just do sprite control, but you mix the sprite control up with other logic. So that was a tricky challenge. Hopefully, uh, even if you didn't get it, this solution makes a little bit of sense. And uh, there's another way to actually solve this that I'll show you probably in another video later on. Thanks for watching.